Mr. President, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to say a few words at this Congress. As you may be aware, the party that I lead, the Fine Gael Party, is a founding member of the European People's Party and has been active in the EPP at every level for many years. Next January, my country will assume the presidency of the Council of the European Union. The coordination of this is being put together by our Minister for European Affairs, Lucinda Creighton, indeed a candidate for the Vice Presidency. This is our seventh presidency and it comes at a critical time for our union. The Irish presidency will focus on a number of priority internal and external issues, but our primary themes will be the promotion of sustainable economic growth and the creation of jobs, including expansion of trade internationally. In my view, the European Union clearly has to move beyond debating institutional issues and focus on issues that have a real impact on the daily lives of our people. With current unemployment levels in Europe, 3.5 million jobs have been lost since the Eurozone crisis began. The creation of jobs for our people is a fundamental objective that can and will make a real difference to citizens. Therefore, the Irish Presidency will focus on measures to promote growth in new and emerging sectors of the European economy by identifying new opportunities under the single market, removing remaining barriers to trade, and tapping the potential of the internet economy through the EU's digital agenda. The European Union must enhance its research and its development capabilities, supporting the green economy, and further develop our external trade links. We must also promote sustainable growth in more traditional sectors like agriculture. Among our external presidency priorities, Ireland will seek to address the linkages between hunger, nutrition, and climate justice by fostering greater understanding of them and ensuring that they are adequately reflected in the agreement of the new International Development Goals post-2015. We will therefore champion greater links between humanitarian aid and development and development relief. The Presidency will draw on lessons learned from the Horn of Africa emergency in 2011, as well as input from our partners in the field to explore the practical application of these principles. However, if we are to be successful pursuing these goals, the immediate priority for the coming months must be to stabilize the Eurozone. This is indeed a time of crisis for the Euro. There are almost 18 million citizens out of work and unemployed. This is unacceptable. Forecasts for growth in the Euro area are getting steadily worse. Now, if we are to deal with this decline, the decisions taken by the European Council on June the 29th to break the link between bank debt and sovereign debt have to be implemented, have to be seen to be implemented. Otherwise, confidence weakens by markets in economic stability and by people in politics. We also agreed to put in place the necessary elements of a banking union which is urgently needed to underpin economic and monetary union and the single market. And if we are to convince international investors and others that the leaders of Europe are committed to the protection of the common currency, then these decisions must be implemented as soon as possible. We have weeks and months, not years, to fix these problems and build a functioning and a viable monetary union. For Ireland's part, we as a programme country are continuing to fulfil our commitments under the Troika Agreement in full and on time. We are currently involved in our eighth assessment. The measures that we have taken have been very painful for the Irish people who up to now have had to shoulder the entire burden of the banking crisis, in our case, 64 billion euro. And despite this very challenging situation, the Irish people gave a very strong endorsement to the Fiscal Stability Treaty in the referendum in May of this year. But we now need to see other measures 
needed to achieve stability put in place. And since we took office, thank you, my government working very closely with the people, working closely with the people, have stabilized our public finances and modest growth has returned to our economy. However, like other countries, if we are to build on this stability, we must have stability and growth in the Eurozone. And that's why delivery on these key decisions is so vital for the future of all our economies. Ladies and gentlemen, Europe now has an opportunity to rectify our problems, to create a new stability and a new prosperity for all our citizens. This will require courage, decisiveness, and trust by leaders, clarity and encouragement to all our citizens that steps, while challenging, are necessary for the common good and that a brighter future lies up ahead. Market confidence grows as a result. We have the opportunity to do this. We have no time to waste, but everything to gain in what is now Europe's most critical hour in the last half century. Thank you.